Okay, as we move on to weak bases, I wanted to stop and do a quick review of this all the dissociations you've seen this chapter so far. It might not have felt like it was so important up until this point, uh, but I want to point out some of the differences that will matter as we move forward. So, for strong acids, um, we'll use an example of HCl, one of our six strong acids. So, for example, HCl, it would dissociate into H plus and Cl minus. Um, a few things I want to point out about this. One is that I used a single arrow, not an equilibrium arrow. Anytime we're dealing with something strong, it should be a single arrow. The reason that matters um, is that single arrows end up meaning we can use mole ratios, want over given, and we don't have to use ice charts. Um, another thing that might be helpful is describing it. What we did here is we let the H, the H plus actually, fall off. So anytime we have a strong acid, the H plus falls off. Everything else, in this case, was just a Cl minus, um, but otherwise everything else would stay together as one other ion. Um, if we have a strong base, so for example, barium hydroxide, because it is strong, we also use a single arrow. Again, that single arrow is because it's strong. It would split up into Ba plus 2 and OH minus that we balance with a coefficient of 2 in front to balance out that subscript below. Um, so what happened here, in the acid the H plus fell off. In a strong base, something that will always be true is the OH minus falls off. All of them, right? So it didn't matter that there were two here. We took the, all the OH minuses away from the Ba. We balanced with a coefficient. So we say the OH minus falls off. In weak acids, um, I'll use an example of H bro. As soon as it is something that is weak, we know that our arrows have to be equilibrium arrows. That matters because anytime we're using equilibrium arrows, we're going to need an ice chart for any of the math we do. Uh, and what happened is actually very similar to strong acids. Um, an H plus falls off, but it's exactly one H plus. Um, you won't really see any differences in strong acids that I can think of, um, but just to be safe, exactly one H plus falls off. Um, and what does that leave us with? BRO, which must be a minus ion to balance out that plus. Um, another example, I guess, of what I mean by just exactly one H plus falling off um, is if we had H3PO4, which is a weak acid dissociating, it would be H plus. The other two H's would stay with the PO4. So it's exactly one H plus falling off. Um, and since this is a plus, we started neutral, we just lost one H plus, that would be a minus. Okay, weak bases are going to actually feel different. Um, an example, so you can see what I mean, we'll use the weak base CH3NH2. Uh, quick note on how do you know if something is a weak acid or a weak base, right? The strong acids and bases you have memorized or you have written in your notes as a list. Weak acids and bases, a uh, general rule of thumb, if it starts with an H, it's a very high likelihood it's a weak acid. Um, if it doesn't, really that chart that you have, the Ka chart, um, there's a section of weak acids and a section of weak bases. Very few things are in both parts of the chart. So if you look for it and find it, you'll know Well, it's, if it's in the acid section, it's an acid. If it's in the base section, it's a base. Um, just make sure you're looking for differences, like H2PO4 minus is different than HPO4 2 minus, something like that. Okay, when we have a weak base, there's no OH in here. A strong base, we see where our hydroxide is coming from that's making it a basic solution. I have no idea right now where that hydroxide is going to come from. So, in order to show you what's actually happening, when we do a weak base dissociation, add water. Now, we haven't added water in any of the other types, and we're not going to add water in any of the other types. But the reason we add water here um, 
we'll use, sorry, we'll use equilibrium arrows again because we're talking about something weak. The reason we add water is because water is what's holding the hydroxide that's going to be released. So we are going to release hydroxide. That's why this is ultimately going to give us a pH that's greater than 7, lots of extra hydroxide. Um, what that means is if you think of water as HOH, what this weak base must be doing is stealing this H plus so that the OH minus can be released. So on the other side, you're going to say, okay, I have this weak base, but it's going to have, it's going to have gained an H plus. Um, I don't care where you add the H plus. Technically, I know it's probably going to add to the end, but you don't have to know that. Don't worry about it. So weak base, CH3, NH3. Since it gained an H, it's now positive because it was neutral and releases the OH minus. So weak base associations, you add water, you steal one H plus for the weak base, you release OH minus. Try those.